Okay, well, hello. Um, it has been a while since I've um, kind of been posting videos, and I had a reason for that. I was not just being um, lazy. Um, so, <laughs> for a number of years, I've had some issues going on um, with my gut, and you know, it was one of those things where um, I just kind of wanted to ignore it and hope that it went away. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Maybe my body's not really sick. Well, year after year passed and it, it didn't really go away. So um, I ended up having something called colitis. Um, it is a, uh, a bowel disease that causes your um, large intestine to become inflamed. Um, and there's just a lot of different... <laughs> things that I wasn't expecting with all this and uh, it's one of those things where it didn't go away <laughs> and uh, surprise surprise colitis doesn't just disappear um, also uh, being under a lot of stress as I have been over the past you know two years or so um, it makes it where uh, the colitis gets worse um, so <laughs> not only was it not going away magically duh but uh, it also um, was getting worse because I was just too stressed and um, I'm, I'm still kind of learning how to deal with it trying to take it day by day Th there are some I I'm not quite sure um, moving forward I'm not quite sure how to move forward <laughs> um, I, I, I read a lot of stories about from other people who have colitis and um, so it definitely seems like something that is manageable um, you just kind of have to take each day at a time and just kind of calm down. Um, I did learn that there's a lot of people who have really, really, really bad cases of colitis and some people who, um, you know, have better cases of colitis. So <laughs> that's where we're at. Um, so I, I just wanted to kind of um, talk about kind of my journey through this. Um, if you've watch my channel you know that I've had a long time problem with anxiety and, and panic and depression and stuff which is actually very high among people with colitis um, so I, um, I I just kinda wanna talk about it and um, just kinda share some of my thoughts and I kinda wanted to um, also take this time to talk about the fear of colonoscopies um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of issues that people have with uh, colonoscopies and I, I understand that <laughs> I, I totally get that um, but there's a lot of things that people don't take into consideration and one of those things is that um, colon cancer is either the second or the third leading cancer killer and uh, it's something that could have usually been prevented by a simple colonoscopy getting checked and having it where you know they go in there and and they remove these what's called polyps it's like these little kind of like a little mushroom on the inside of your large intestine it doesn't hurt even if you aren't sedated it doesn't hurt and um, you know these these little polyps if if you let them go they can turn into cancer and when they do it's just one of those things where it doesn't really show up until it's too late and I know everybody's thinking look I'm scared of cancer I don't want to talk about cancer look I, I get that too um, but remember that colon cancer is something that is usually avoidable. So, you know, if you're if you're Googling stuff like, hey, uh, rectal bleeding, is this serious? Just go ask the doctor. Say, look, I'm having some rectal bleeding. I want to make sure that it's it's not serious. You know, um, people think, oh, it's it's nothing. You know, it's uh, it's an ulcer and I'll just ignore it and it'll go away. Or, you know, it's just a hemorrhoid and it'll go away. And it's like, well... <laughs> I'm not saying that it's not one of those things, but maybe it would be a better option to just double check. I mean, especially because colon cancer can be so easily prevented. And uh, maybe not 100% of the time, but a grand majority of the time. And so, look, I'm scared of getting a colonoscopy. I get that. But if you face that temporary fear, you could add years to your life. And uh, that sounds like a pretty good switch off. Um, especially since, like I said, colon cancer, the majority of the time starts out as those little polyps that could have been easily removed. So, um, 
let me start at the beginning <laughs> because this <laughs> this this gets this gets funny and and also not <laughs> not funny so i have extreme anxiety and panic and depression and all kinds of other stuff so okay let's just get that oh and i have colitis <laughs> so let's get that out of the way um, I knew that there was something wrong. You know, I could feel it in my gut. I just, I just knew it. Um, and when I say I could feel it in my gut, I don't mean my, my, my heart of hearts. I mean literally my gut. You, you feel it in your loins, in your, in your intestines. You feel it. Um, and I just decided whatever it was, I was just gonna let it kill me because I did not want to get a, a colonoscopy. I've been scared of getting colonoscopies since I was a, um, since I was a kid. I just. The idea of the sedation and, and I don't know what it was specifically about colonoscopies, but um, very fearful. And look, maybe you're facing them and, and you're just like freaking out. Look, calm down for a second, okay? Um, here I am. I went through the procedure. I'm totally fine, okay? And you're going to be totally fine too, okay? Um, you're going to beat this. You're going to face it. It's going to be okay. Um, don't Don't let your mind run crazy, okay? Take care of it. Go to the doctor and, and get it taken care of. Think about something else, okay? It, it's a couple days away, maybe. Maybe it's a couple weeks away. Try, try not to worry about that. Um, try to just stay calm. Um, being stressed never helps any medical condition. There's nothing that could happen to your body that that's stressing and freaking out and that that, that that's gonna help. It, it's just not. It's not gonna help. So try to stay calm, and um, you know, then just face face it in little steps. First, you just get to the date. At this point, there's nothing you can do, so just, you know, distract yourself with other things. Read a new book or go for walks, <laughs> you know, stay active, do something. Um, then, then the next step is the colon prep, okay? Just focus on that. First off, go to the pharmacy, you get it, you take it home, you read the instructions, you make sure you know what, what you're doing. It's very safe, okay? I know that a lot of people are, oh, but what if, look, here's the thing. They said on my colon prep, it said, if you have colitis, you probably shouldn't do um, do this. Well, they thought I had colitis, so I was like, uh, well, there was a chance that I had colon cancer, and I don't want to talk about that yet. I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, So I was like, should I do this? And so me and the pharmacist were both like, I don't know. So I called the, called the GI, and I'm like, is me and the pharmacist are both kind of scared. And, and my, my GI is, is the best GI in the world. I, I couldn't be happier with him. Okay, he is a very calm man. He's an Indian man, uh, and just his presence. He has such a great presence in the um, in in the when he's talking to you. He calms you down. He gave me really bad news in a really good way, <laughs> and it didn't feel overwhelming when he gave it to me. I, w I was like, oh no! But when he gave it to me, I was like, you know, that was very well delivered. He, it's not like he was impersonal. But uh, so, you know, my first tele telemed call with him, you know, everything goes fine. But then as I call his office, because it's what me and the pharmacist are thinking about, and uh, he calls me back within 15 minutes. And uh, he says, you tell the pharmacist to give that to you. And I say, so, so you're saying, Doc, that, that, that it's safe, that this is, that, that, that I'll be fine. He says, I do this for over, um, what does he say? Um, he goes, over 20 years, very, very safe. And, and so I, I took it and he was right, it was fine. So that's the next stage, just get through the colon prep. And here's the thing, everybody tells you how terrible it's gonna be and ah, it's not, okay, it, it's fine. The stuff doesn't taste as bad as they say, the pooping isn't as bad as they say. And I had colitis, if you don't, if you don't know anything about colitis, let me just tell you, a lot of loose stools. I actually forgot just the simple pleasure of having a normal poop. So. You know, this is something, pooping a lot is something that, you know, I thought was, ah, and it, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't. I, I, I did have to make sure, though, because of hemorrhoids, I had to make sure not to stay on the toilet for too long. So I would go, get up, and I'd keep doing that, keep wiping off. So I got a little bit chapped. Um, but what you can do for that, easy fixes. First off, try and use a, excuse me, try and use a, uh, like a towelette and just kind of dab it instead of wipe. <laughs> and uh, then when you're done with the towelette, use um, use like something that'll dry it off and just once again, dab it dry. And then get like, you can get um, like diaper rash cream or something like that and just rub it on there and it'll help it to, you know, kind of seal it and it'll help it not be so 
sore and sensitive. Um, I, I was checked the night of and a little bit the morning after, but then I think it was only mild, mild irritation the rest of that day, maybe one more day, and then it was gone. So following that, it, it didn't get bad. So um, that's that. So the colon prep, easy peasy. You got this. Um, just make sure you take all of it at the right time, and don't stop drinking it if you start having clear poops. Drink the whole thing, okay? Um, and then the next thing is in the morning, make sure that you dilute it correctly. Some people have a little bit of confusion with this, and they don't do the proportions right. It can get you can get pretty thirsty by the time that your um, your colonoscopy comes around, and you're not supposed to drink anything, um, even broth. Like I think it's five hours before. So I think it's five hours before. So either way, this is something that make sure you understand the instructions correctly. That's just going to be focus on that, okay? Then the next part is the actual procedure itself. Um, this sounds like it's going to be really scary. It's not. Um, most people say that the colon prep is the hardest part. I would say it depends <laughs> whether you do it sedated or not. <laughs> See, I they wanted to check me for a couple different things, and so they said, hey, let's just go ahead and kill two birds with one stone. I know, poor birds, right? And uh, so they did an endoscopy, endoscopy, endoscopy at the same time as a colonoscopy. Well, not the same time. like ah! I mean, you know, the endoscopy and then the colonoscopy. And I elected to have it non-sedated, and the endoscopy was a little uncomfortable, but... Um, I don't. I, I'm not trying to scare you here. It's 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 not bad. You can do it non sedated if you want. Um, you just gotta remember to stay calm and think about something else. Focus on your breathing. Um, try to calm yourself down. The sedation. I always was scared of sedation, but I understand now what a blessing it is. It's just a way to. Now I haven't used it yet. I did the endoscopy, 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 and the colonoscopy both unsedated, and it was fine. I had no damage, nothing happened, um, and had I been sedated, the same would have been true. I mean, these people are trustworthy. This is what they do, okay? Um, it's like when I listen to a musician, I trust them to play me music. <laughs> when I am skilled with something and I am doing something for somebody, they, they trust me to do that. And it's the exact same thing. These people handle these things all the time. So, you know, I go in, and the one nurse is kind of trying to scare me because she wants me to get the station. She's like, oh, it's going to be so terrible. Make sure you raise your hand because the one thing she says, she's like, now, a lot of people are tempted when the, when the scope goes down, but they just grab it and rip it out. And I'm like, let me stop you right there. Have you ever seen the movie The Matrix when Neo pulls the thing out? No, I won't be touching that leg. Like, Nah, it's good, man. It, you, you put it in there, and I, and I was true to my word. I was even kind of tempted. I was even kind of tempted to touch that scope. Um, so then they spray this, um, like, stuff on your throat, and, like, this is numbing. It's, it's, it's numbing so that it'll, you know, you won't feel any pain and everything. And she's like, it's going to have a little bit of a taste. It's like rotten banana carbonate, carb, carbohydrate. Car carbonated, carbonated rotten bananas with like mixed with death or maybe a rotting mouse. I don't know. And it's like, ugh. and then they want you to swallow. It's like, ugh. Now, this is nothing to fear. It just tastes a little gross. Once again, though, if you take the sedation path, you probably aren't gonna remember that. Um, and so then they put this thing on on your mouth, and it's like a, a chomp thing, but it just kind of looks like something from an S and M <laughs> video. <laughs> And uh, it has a hole in it and everything, you know, and then they put this like breather mask over um, to give you oxygen. Um, I, they were feeding me oxygen just to kind of, I think, help me to stay calm, um, but it didn't have anything in it. Oh, I, I could have had something in it, and there are some procedures where the, at the level of sedation requires for you to have oxygen, but they just did it just in case I just changed my mind in the middle of the procedure because you can't just get up and walk away. <laughs> like, oh, wait, uh, I still got that in there, so... Um, not, not a big deal though. So, um, then they have you, have you push it back and they have you swallow it. And it's very weird and very uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable because it's down your throat at the same time that you're breathing. And so it just kind of, it's a very bad feeling. And sometimes I still have a little bit of phantom feeling like it, like I have the scope in there and I have to like calm myself down and kind of rub it out. So I definitely, <laughs> definitely would not recommend, um, doing that. Uh, non-sedated. You could if you want to. Like I'm not trying to trying to you know make you make you worry or anything like that. It just you'll be a lot more 
happy, a lot calmer um, if you take the sedation. There are different sedation levels, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But um, <clears throat> So then they do this endoscope, and, endoscope, and it, they're like, make sure, swallow, swallow, but then once it's in, you don't swallow. I'm like, okay. So I swallow, and they're like, swallow. I'm like, I, I swallow it, so I swallow again. And, uh, oh, I didn't tell you the best part. This, this other nurse all walks up, and she's all... I've had a couple endoscope endoscopes done uh, without sedation. Just focus on your breathing. Try not to swallow. Calm down. It'll be totally fine. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I like you, nurse. You, nurse, you stay over there. And she was just the tech. So I think, thankfully, she didn't really have much to do <laughs> because <laughs> I wasn't on anything, you know. And so she would take a few notes here and there. But other than that, she just stood by my side. There was this one part, though, um, when they're putting the scope into your, you know, into your intestine. Um, so they, they push air in to kind of, you know, move the, in, the, the intestines like that so they can kind of look around and stuff, get a good image of what's going on up there. And there was this one part that was around the swelling um, from my colitis, and it was a little bit uncomfortable. Um, it was like, it was basically like having bad cramps. Um, I mean, it wasn't anything like, oh, that's so scary. No, it, it, it wasn't scary. Once again, it, it was not scary. The colonoscopy itself, honestly, wasn't even that bad of a procedure. I don't even feel the need to get sedated for colonoscopy in the future. Now, an endoscope, <laughs> there's a good chance. <laughs> there's a good chance I'll, I'll take sedation the next time around because it's just it's so uncomfortable and it's like all you can think about is swallowing and it's in your throat and there's just ugh, and there's like this gag reflex. So for a lot of it, I'm like throwing up, but like there's nothing to throw up because I just got done with colon prep. And even if there was, like, he has this little suction thing on it. So, I mean, like, uh, uh, and then you just, even if something did come, he would just <laughs> suck it back out. So, you know, it, it's not really, it's just uncomfortable. Um, if, if that kind of stuff doesn't bother you, well, then fine. Um, I did feel like I swallowed sometimes. It was hard to tell because um, of the numbness. But uh, they said I did a great job. And um, after, after the numbing went away, um, I didn't have, for like a week afterwards, my throat felt just, um, in the evenings, it would feel kind of like just a little, a slight pressure. I talked to the doctor about it, they said, ah, that's normal because, you know, it up upsets, I think they call it the mucosa, something like that, I don't know, anyways, not really important. So then, you know, they go to the colon, to the colonoscopy, so I, you know, they, they, they turn me around and everything, and I, you know, you lay a certain way and all this. And I thought they were gonna do like a countdown three, two, one, but no, he just takes his, takes his, <laughs> takes his finger with this like lubricant and shoves it in there. Um, and uh, you know that was that was a little unpleasant. And but then the rest of the colonoscopy wasn't that bad. Like as they go in, um, sometimes when they add air, it just feels like really bad um, cramping, like super bad. Now if you have had children. Uh, if there's any females watching, and you've had children, and you've had any kind of like surgery or something like that, like maybe snippy snippy or anything like that, or however, that's whatever, um, you might feel an elevated level of pain. So uh, if that happens, whoops, <laughs> that, that is a thing. It, it might hurt a little bit more um, if you um, are a woman and if you've had children. So not much you can do about that, but the sedation will make it where you, you won't feel any of that if you do decide to do that. So, um, okay. Um, after after that, they they wheeled me out, and uh, I waited a little bit. I had to wait because he was work. He was had another woman to work on, and she had um, I think it was diverticulitis or something like that, it's where these um, basically these like pockets in your intestines get kind of inflamed. And anyways, so she had all this stuff, and they removed like twenty something polyps or anything. It, it took a little bit, but then as soon as he was done with her, uh, he came out and talked to me. Very calming guy, I tell you. He walks in, his hands are in his pocket, just really, I, I love my GI doctor, he's just so calm. And having a per, being a person with anxiety and panic, I, like, I just so much appreciated it. So he walks in, he says, you you have coritis, you can see here and here, and he shows me on the picture, and you know, he's just real real down to earth, you know, talks real calm, he didn't, he wasn't, didn't get excited. And when he, find, when he found it, he said, Michael, you see? You see on the screen? That's colitis, and uh, you know, painless procedure. I mean, th this guy just knows what he's doing. You know, he just he just is so good at his job. And uh, there was this one part where, where the pain. I really thought I really thought that it was going to be like an alien, you know, with the, uh, and uh, it was a very very bad cramping on that one part. Just because just because I have colitis, not for everybody. 
Um, and uh, and uh, so he took out a little bit of the air and came out a little bit, and then he went back forward, and that was fine. Now, something that I didn't understand is that they actually go all the way to the end of the large intestines before they actually start looking at things. Then they start removing polyps, if you have any, um, you know, and doing more in-depth, kind of looking around, that kind of stuff. They also take the time in an, endos in an endoscope to look inside at the beginning of the uh, small intestines, and in a colonoscopy at the end of the small intestines, which I did not know. So now let's talk about this. Okay, so here I am knowing I have an issue and I'm like, I'm just going to die. I'm just, that, that's fine. Like, I'd rather die than have to deal with this. And um, that sounds good, but when you have to deal with the constant pain and the constant discomfort, shooey, <laughs> that gets unfun very fast. So something changed and I said I have five kids and it's not the same anymore. Like, I realized that if it was for me, I would have been okay with just weathering the pain and letting myself die. But stop and think about that, okay? There's there's people in your life, maybe not maybe you don't you feel like you don't have anybody in your life, which I'm really sorry if you feel like that. There is someone who cares. Maybe you can't think of them off the top of your head, but there is. Or maybe there will be in the future. You'll never know if you don't try. Um so it, it changed because I realized I was doing it for them. I had to face my fear to be an example to them. I had to deal with this so that I could be there for them. Me getting my colonoscopy was one of the hardest things that I've done because I've been afraid of them for so long. And for me, it was an act of selfless love. I realized as a father that it wasn't about me. And that was something that really was a turning point. And I started realizing, yeah, I'm going to get this done. I was in the ER and the guys all, you know, your organs, are, everything has regular function. Your, your, your blood work looks great and all that stuff. He said, but uh, I, I w I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend that you get uh, a colonoscopy done. Um, I'm going to give you a referral to the GI here. And uh, I, my first thought was, eh, maybe I'll do that. Uh, and I said, how long do I have to think about this? And he said, you do whatever you want. I'm just saying, you know, if you were my patient, that's what I would have you done. Um, and uh, so I, I, it was a Saturday evening, and I go home, and it's Sunday, and I'm thinking about it. And Monday, it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so I'm still thinking about it. And uh, then Tuesday, I'm like, well, let's just call. So I call and I say, how long is your waiting on this? And she says, if you're okay with just seeing a nurse practitioner, then it's going to be May. And this is way back in January. And I'm like, and what if I'm not okay with seeing the nurse practitioner? And she says, oh, July. And I'm like, I can't wait that long. <laughs> so, you know, at this point, you know, I'm thinking about it and I'm getting more and more anxious because I'm having all these heavy, heavy blood flow losses from, from rectal bleeding and, you know, I don't feel good. And, you know, this is just something that, like, what, what am I going to do? You know, what, what am I going to do? And, and there were some people, that, oh, well, what about God? Is God going to heal you? Look, here's the thing. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I said, God, please help me. And God didn't heal me. Supernaturally, like that. Okay. I will say that in the colonoscopy, it looked like I had had um, chronic colitis that was much larger than the breakout that I was currently having. But God did not bring me supernatural healing at that time. In fact, God specifically told me, and I know a lot of people say, oh, I have a word from God, but really, really though. And God told me this. He said, I'm, I'm not going to take this away. You're going to have to go through with this. I'm going to be with you. It's going to be scary. It's going to be okay. And so all these other people who have a problem with doctors, oh, well, we'll just keep praying for healing. It's like, how about instead, how about you listen to me because I, I need someone who I can talk to. <laughs> um, how about instead you, you pray for my anxiety because I'm, I'm feeling really anxious. And um, now that we're all past all this and we're getting treatment and everything, I still have, struggle with these high levels of anxiety. You know, I, it was so bad and so stressful for so long that it's like I burned, it, it's like I burned up my body. You know what I mean? Like, 
I had a lot of heart heart palpitations and um, you know just not feeling well, uh, thinking feeling like I was going to pass out and stuff. All these different things going on, and um, you know I shouldn't I shouldn't blame people though. They, we all in our heart think, oh no, I don't like doctors. And the truth is, the doctor is there to help you. Like <laughs> just like the sedation, it, it's there to help you. It's there to help you feel better. So you know when you're dealing with something like colon colonoscopy and stuff and maybe you're real scared about it maybe you're facing a procedure of some sort you're just really scared about it here's the thing these doctors do this for a living okay you do your job which is stay calm try and get some exercise go out for some walks keep your mind preoccupied with something else um do whatever prep work you have to do for it so maybe abstaining from certain foods sometimes um you know, I know for allergy tests, for instance, they say don't don't eat anything with nitrates in it. Okay, um, let me find out what a nitrate is. <laughs> they say you know for colonoscopies, you know, avoid um, a high fiber diet a couple days before. You know, the day before you don't eat um, except for breakfast, or depending on some people, you don't even eat breakfast. It's just liquids, and so then you go through and you just kind of try and focus on your job, and then when you get to the doctor, your job is over. And now you're trusting them to do their job. So having five kids changes changed things. And I, you know, was having this rectal bleeding for years and it, scared of what it could be. So I just kept doing this thing where I lied to myself. Oh, it's just hemorrhoids. It's it's fine. It'll go away on its own. And then it kept coming back year after year. And you know, it would go away for a little bit, then it come back. And when I was really having real bad anxiety, sometimes I would have a lot more bleeding. And I kept thinking it's something else. It's it's just something else. I, I don't I don't I don't know what it is. It just it's just something else. Okay, I just you know all the while scared that it's going to be colon cancer. And uh, the breaking point was at the beginning of the year. I started having just these unformed black stools, which if you know anything about anatomy, black stools are usually a big uh oh. And not not to scare you if you're having black stool. I'm not trying to scare you. Go to the doctor. Okay, don't delay it. It's like ulcers. There are people who have died because they weren't willing to take their antibiotics. And I know you might have strong opinions about antibiotics or whatever. Here's the thing: the natural remedy is good as a good thing to live by. You shouldn't become too dependent on medicine because it can screw up your system, cause kidney problems, you can become over-dependent, you know, those kinds of things. They can stop working as the case of antibiotics. But in the case of life or death, the natural way doesn't work. The natural way will leave you dead. And everybody thinks, oh no, I have this miracle cure, I have this turmeric. I have this, that's one, one thing somebody told me. They said, you know, you should try taking um, this one thing. Oh, turmeric. And I said, yeah, that actually makes, makes the bleeding worse for me. So there's that. Um, I know some people have bad reactions to ashwagandha. These are things that, you know, the natural way isn't always the best way. Live by the natural way. That's great. But when your body is faced with something that it can't deal with naturally, medical medical intervention is kind of necessary and I'm just kind of trying to talk to you in a real way I'm trying to be down to earth I'm trying to be calm there's a lot of people who don't get the medical help that they need because they're trying to do things the natural way here's the thing I'm not saying you shouldn't you know be healthy and you know all these things and eat right that's that's great good on you mate but when you're in a situation like for instance colitis it's too little too late you need medical intervention. And I take, um, so far, uh, I take one pill um, four times a day. It's a pill called mesalamine. It's, it's that big. It's a little, it's a little big, um, but it helps me to feel better. And I know a lot of people who have a lot worse than me. They have different kinds of enemas that they have to take. Um, different kinds of um, anal, I think they're called foams that you have to take. Um, there's different pills. Some people are on like seven different medications for their colitis. And so far, I'm only on one. And I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I don't know. But don't worry about tomorrow. Just let today 
be what you focus on. Today, get the help that you need. Okay? Be real for a second and notice that you're only saying that you want to go the natural path because you're scared of getting surgery. You're scared of, of what they're going to find. Here's the thing. You might be scared of what you're going to find, but it's better to find it because it's already there. What if it was something that was treatable that you never found because you were just too scared? Don't let your moment of fear take away years of a good life, especially if you've got like kids and grandkids. You don't you, you face one moment of fear to, to do your colonoscopy and you have years added to your life that's a pretty good switch off in my opinion so oh, I just kept lying to myself it's not that bad that big of a deal and I scared to death of colonoscopies always have been <laughs> I maybe I, maybe I was with me. so things got pretty bad and um, I just kind of reached this this breaking this breakdown point. I remember um, looking into the toilet and just seeing so much blood and so much dark stool, and I just it did something, and I just kind of broke in that moment. I was like petrified, and not that it, there hadn't been blood in the stool before, but at this point it was just I don't know, like it was almost like I had a wall where I was just like everything's fine. You know, and something about that moment just broke that wall. And I was terrified and just completely overcome. I, I couldn't, I just was, I just sat there and complete like, you know, and then to make things worse, I looked things up on WebMD and I looked things up on, on this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, um, read these horror stories about these people who died from this or these people who, you know, <laughs> so here I am you know, just having over overwhelming amounts of, of anxiety. It just my anxiety goes through the roof. Um, I start having phantom symptoms too, um, where, you know, I think that I'm having this or I think that I'm having that. Like maybe maybe I'm having a heart attack, you know, all these different stuff and, and just getting myself worked up. Um, going through constant anxiety, you know, I, I, I stop being able to sleep at night and just things aren't going well. Um, and then the constant the constant anxiety of wondering what it could be you know what I mean there is a certain level of peace that comes when you actually know what it is now I don't mean that all of a sudden you're totally fine but I mean it doesn't bother you at the same at the same level the fear of the unknown is like crippling oh what is it gonna be um, there was a really good chance that it actually was colon cancer and you know this is something that was just like I don't know how to do with this. I'm not ready for this. I, you know, I was a kid and I said, oh, I'll worry about it when I'm an old man. Here I am at 30. I don't feel old, but yet all these things are happening to me like I'm an old man. And so, you know, just this overwhelming and emotionally I was just gone. I, I, I lost my ability to process all the work that I had done with anxiety and depression were just like shattered. And I felt like I had never faced it a single day in my life. Um, the, it was just, it was Oh, and here's the thing. I, I want to give you a little bit of advice for the waiting because there's going to be a lot of waiting when you go to the doctor and you're, you're waiting for this, you're waiting for that, waiting for your colonoscopy, waiting for your procedure. You're going to feel really scared and there's going to be times when you just feel overcome. And I just want to kind of walk you through a couple of things that really helped. First off, <clears throat> lay down, do breathing exercises. So what you do is you take one hand and you put it over your stomach about your diaphragm area, maybe a little lower. And then you take your other hand, you put it over your chest. And the goal is to breathe in through your nose without your upper hand moving. And then out through your mouth. Do it slowly. And there's different variations you can do. Like one is called, I think it's called the wave. You breathe in as much as you can with your stomach, and then you breathe in as much as you can with your chest, and then you let out your stomach, and then you let out your chest. And when you let it out, you blow. And these little breathing exercises, they just take a minute you, to, to do one breath. And then so you do them for like 15 minutes or like something like that. That can really help. When you're doing this, don't think about anything. Just focus on counting. Maybe breathe in for the count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let it out for eight. One, 
to, real casual and slow. These kinds of things can really help. Another thing that might help is meditation. Um, uh, different variations of this for different groups is there's focused thinking, you know, where you're, um, where you're more focused on controlling your thinking and directing in certain ways. There's meditation where you're thinking specifically about one thing. Um, if you're a Christian, for instance, focusing on scripture and stuff that, that really speaks to you, um, that kind of stuff. Um, okay, uh, those are just some ideas about what to do in the waiting. Try and do something else. Try and try and try and remember that there's a world still spinning. You, you're overcome with this thing that you're scared of, but check out, check it out. There's other things happening too, and there's good things happening too. So just kind of try and focus on some of those good things. Um, and uh, so you know, oh boy, I can't even explain to you how bad things got. Um, after the colonoscopy, I was still crippled by fear. It was something where I've never had it that controlling in my life. Think about the worst panic you've ever had. It didn't go away, and it was all consuming. It was all you could think about, and that's kind of what it was like. So here we are, and I can honestly say that I'm only at this level of functionality solely by the grace of God. And I, I know that everybody says that, but you don't understand how big of a mess I was. And... I did not take any video of it because I'm not going to do that. I was, I was scared to death. I'm not going to, hey, everybody look at me freaking out, you know. Um, everything just kind of came to a head. And I'm still trying to stumble forward, you know what I mean? Like, so what's the purpose of life? You know, every, nothing's really bringing me joy. And, you know, all these different things. And it's all coming to a head at one time. And then this overwhelming crushing crushing anxiety and it's like it'll always be like this and so then you start you just start going on the shutdown mode and when you're under that level of stress and duress your, your body's just kind of like yep we're going into dormant mode now and things just start messing up i mean my blood pressure went crazy my blood sugar levels were going crazy i'm not even diabetic and i was having you know really high blood sugar and, you know, my heart rate, one time, we, we clocked it at over 110, doing absolutely nothing. And, uh, you know, oh my goodness, just so many different things that I was dealing with. Um, um, they had me do a um, hemorrhoid supposit uh, suppository um, that I think is what was responsible for some of my uh, heart palpitations, but I'm not positive about that. I don't know. It could have been something else. You, you never know. I tried this this um, thing for my anxiety called hydroxazine, and uh, it just gave me a really bad cough, and it was <clears throat> very uncomfortable. So we didn't continue on that one. But, um, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm thinking there's a good chance that I go ahead and start taking medication for this because it's I, I can't deal with this so much. And thankfully, I have someone who's there with me, my wife. Um, a lot of people don't don't have that, and uh, I'm just so overwhelmed by this, you know, and I'm getting better. I, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, things really will always be bad, but, you know, I am getting better, but I still feel so overwhelmed. And, you know, trying to, trying to face all this and trying to work through it is just one of those things that just, like, I remember multiple times crying in the doctor's office. I remember, you know waking up in the middle of the night and just trying so hard to fall back asleep and you couldn't which is actually part of colitis sometimes with some people at some times and there's things called flare-ups and at those times it's a little bit you know i don't want to bore you with the details but it was just one of those things where it was very hard to deal with and um another thing is colitis is very closely related with stress and anxiety so when you have stress and anxiety, it will make your colitis worse. And when you have colitis, it will make you feel strong feelings of stress and anxiety. <laughs> so there's really no escaping the endless circle. And uh, so, okay, you know, maybe maybe you're done with this. Here's the thing. You're going to get through this, okay? Maybe you have high levels of stress and anxiety. You're going to get through it, okay? You're, you're going to do fine. You're, I'm already proud of you. And I say this, I'm not, I say this as like, you. I just bared my soul to you. Like, I... I feel like I feel like nothing. You know, I feel like nothing left. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. I feel like I'm emptied. You know, all my arrogance of oh look how great I was doing with my anxiety. I feel like it's gone. Um, look at uh, you know oh look what I can do and all these different stuff. I don't even need medication. I, I feel like that's gone. And so I, I'm saying this as like some a co-soldier. Okay, 
I'm so proud of you for, for making it to this point and for not giving up, okay? You, you're, you're scared, and that's okay. Everybody gets scared. Okay, I don't know if the feeling's going to pass, but I do know that you can you can just focus on now, okay? Let tomorrow be tomorrow's burden. And I always heard that, you know, if you're not uh, taking care of stuff, you're just being lazy. Here's the thing. When you've got something like this going on and you're just overwhelmed, it's okay to have the second grade stuff just be pushed to the second grade, okay? Your life doesn't have to be consumed by work. Um, it doesn't have to be consumed by house chores. Focus on getting through the day, okay? It's going to be okay. It's all right. You're going to get through this moment, and that's all you have to do. Thankfully, God never gave you tomorrow to deal with. He gave you today to deal with. And here's some good news, too. You only have to go through today once. Once it's over, you don't have to go through it again, okay? So remember these things, your little hopeful bets, okay? Because sometimes that's what I really, really, really needed. And uh, it's okay to have a bad day. And it's okay if you're having a bad day, if you're having a rough day, for you to still, for it to be still be a good day. You know what I mean? Like, don't let it be something that consume. Try to focus it, it, as much as you can. I know it's hard to control your thinking, that kind of stuff, especially in such a kind of situation. But try to try to focus on something good in your life. If you just sit there thinking about thinking about your condition, what's going on, it's going to eat you up. I mean, really, try and distract yourself at least leading up to the procedure or the colonoscopy or whatever. Okay. Um, it not much else I can say about that it's one of those things where yeah so it really looked like cancer and I was kind of freaking out and I didn't think I was going to pull through I really thought I was going to be dead at this point um, I'm already surprised that I made it to 30 without dying so there's that there's, there's five specific aspects that I want to talk about with the colonoscopy that helped me and I think it will help you the first thing, the GI doctor uh, a GI doctor is a gastroenterologist. He he deals with um, so basically everything from your esophagus down to your butthole. Okay, um, he it's very important that you connect with your GI doctor. It'll put you more at ease. Um, try and find out how long he's been doing it. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, ask him questions before you know this is kind of what he's there for. If you have concerns, let him know. Um, Okay, so my GI is a very calm, relaxed guy, very professional. Um, he has great bedside manner. I mean, he comes inside. So I, when, when we're having our first, our first setup appointment, I'm like, hey, I, I'd like to not do this um, sedated. And he says, oh, we, we don't put you in full sedation. We, we uh, what does he say? We do very, very light, very mild sedation. But if you'd like, we don't have to do that. And I said, well... Yeah, you know, like I'll think about it and we'll, we'll come back around to it when the day gets here because I'm like, I can't deal with all this. I can't make up my mind. I just can't right now. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with the thing. So then I get there and I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to do it sedated. And uh, she goes, you don't want to do it sedated? Like, it was the craziest thing in the world. And I was just thinking, y you know, lady, in World War One, you had these soldiers that were like dying in trenches and... and sometimes getting patched up with with no sedation they they're fine <laughs> well n now they're dead but i mean they were fine then like i think i'll get through a colonoscopy i'm not even like having anything cut up on me or anything right um anyways so um she's like well okay so then she goes and talks to the other nurse and she's like yeah that, that's you know, uh, at the doctor's fine, I'm fine with it or whatever, right? So then they take me in there, and like three or four times, so you don't want sedation. I'm like, no, I don't want sedation. And so then the doctor comes in real casual, just, to, I mean, you got to love this guy. He's just, he just, he was such a calming person to have. He walks in, he's like, um, you do not want to do sedation, why? And I said, well, I'd like to get on with, with, I have some other things that I want to get done for today. And one of the things was I was concerned I was going to have hypoglycemia. For some reason, sometimes my blood sugar drops. I have no idea why. Um, and um, it was going on the second day with no food. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't really want to have this issue. Like, I've got glucose tablets, and I'm just, like, ready to start downing them. Like, I, I don't know what else to do. i got Sprite, too. I'm like, I'm, I have come prepared. Um, so, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm a little bit... A little bit concerned about that, so I want to get done with this so I can go eat. 
And uh, that was another thing that was really causing my colonoscopy to be more stressed than I thought it was going to be was, what if I have a blood sugar drop? And here's the thing. You, you can do things to prepare. You know, get stuff in order like glucose tablets and stuff. Make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids. Make sure that you're, you know, having your broth. Make sure you're, you know, that kind of stuff. And you, you'll get through it. It'll be okay. Um, if you're diabetic, you do need to talk to your doctor about that. Um, and if you have other things like maybe um, anti-seizure medication or anything like that, that's something you need to talk to him about and make sure you mention it to him. But anyways, he's a very calm guy. And, I, you know, I had to come to the point of he does this all the time. He knows what he's doing. That's the first thing. There's an element of trust. It's not in my control. The second thing is I had to trust him. So I had to realize his skill. Then I had to come to the point of trusting him. Um, and then there was a third thing. I couldn't run from it. This is something that I was facing. The sooner you kind of swallow that fight or flight instinct and you're saying, look, I'm, I'm going to deal with this, the easier it gets. If you try to, you know, it's just going to make it worse. It's just it's just going to make it worse. So um, I, I really couldn't run from it. Another thing that was very helpful is that my GI was very understanding. He gave me... Um, my, he gave me choices, you know, he didn't just back me into a corner. And I think that part of that was he knew that I was anxious. And uh, when we first started the colonoscopy, my heart, well, the endoscopy, my heart rate was around like 100. Um, well, in the waiting room, it was like 100. And she's like, it's a little fast. And I was like, yeah, I'm a little dehydrated. I haven't had anything for five hours. So, <laughs> so she gives me an IV. But then when we were in there, it was like somewhere around like in the 90s or something like that. And so then by the time that the colonoscopy was finished, it was down in the 70s. It was I was getting heart rate readings in the 70s with going through the colonoscopy unsedated. I'm telling you, it's not it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I thought. You know, your your mind is going to make it seem like it's worse than it is and it's it's not going to be that bad, okay? So, if you have concerns while you're waiting for your um, appointment, go to the ER, talk to them about it. See what they think. Make an appointment with your doctor if your colonoscopy is real far off, and uh, then just get it done, and it'll, it'll you'll feel better about it once it's done. There'll be a huge clear of mind, and this is one thing that um, I really um, was thinking about: is facing this fear of the colonoscopy was going to help me to not be afraid of this fear that I had had for years about having colon cancer. I didn't have colon cancer, so excuse me. So there's a win there. Um, I also so far haven't had to have my large intestine removed. They did not have to remove my rectum. These are all good things. Um, sometimes you get a little bit like, oh no, but it's okay. It's all right. Just take today. Um, tomorrow is tomorrow's problem. Um, so uh, he allowed me the freedom to do whatever amount of sedation I wanted. There's there's lots of different things you do not sedated. That's nothing is in your system. The next level is like a very light sedation. It basically is like taking an anti-anxiety drug. Um, you're still fully conscious. You're going to remember everything, but then you still can't. Uh, you still have some of the discomfort and stuff like, you know, the nausea and that kind of stuff. Then there's the next stage down. This is like a twilight sleep kind of thing. You're probably not going to remember it or just remember it in spotches. Um, you're very relaxed and calm. That kind of thing. The next thing, I think there's one more stage, and I don't really, really remember what it entails, but then there's a full anesthesia. Um, anytime you're under a sedation, the person who had, there's somebody who administers the, that, who their job is just to watch you. So all the sedation levels are very low risk, and as soon as they turn the sedation off, you're going to start coming out of it. So um, it's, a, it's a very quick thing, quick acting thing, and it you know, starts resolving very quickly and within a couple hours. In fact, sometimes some people have even less than that. They go straight from the colonoscopy to the to get something to eat. Um, so it's just you know different people handle it differently. But um, their their job is just to watch you and to watch your vitals, make sure everything's fine. And if anything isn't fine, they're gonna they screen you before the colonoscopy ever starts, and you just kind of get an idea of your general health. And they can see oh this person's not looking too good. You know, um, and then when when they do give you the sedation, if they're if they have concerns, they'll stop it right there. Um, and you're right at the doc at the, at the hospital, so <laughs> they can usually fix <laughs> usually fix. So it's not something really to worry about. Um, and then when they have a heavier thing like anesthesia, they have the anesthesiologist who their job is literally to sit there and watch your vitals and to make sure your body is handling it okay. 
that's their job that's what they do you don't have to worry about them getting concerned with this or walking out of the room no they stay there and they do that so i mean that's a huge weight off your shoulder they're basically basically like your little um surgery angel and uh you know th these people they want you to be okay they don't they don't want you to die they, they, they want to help you they, they want to get you through this they want to help you get the treatment that you need to get better and I know that we have this idea of fear of doctors, but the doctor is there to help you. I know that sometimes what they do is scary and is painful, but that pain helps you to feel better, like the sedation. is there so you're not as scared when the endoscope goes in. Nobody likes the idea of an endoscope going down their throat. Nobody likes that. But the sedation is there not to force you into being sedated, but to help you to not be scared, to help you to get through it, to help you to not damage your throat while you're in it. That's what it's there for. So keep that in mind. Um, he took it very seriously, and he he got me in very quickly, and I really appreciated that. So that's the first thing about facing my my colonoscopy fear was connecting with the GI doctor. I, by the time that I was done with the colonoscopy and he had explained to me what it was and what tra treatment he was prescribing, um, I felt very comfortable with him. It came in stages, not all at once. The first one, I was like, well, I, I really wish I would have connected with them better. Um, before the colonoscopy, I, I had some slight, I really wish that we would have had more time to talk. But that was more of last minute jitters, I think, because he was just very calm and collected, and that helped me. If you are a very excitable person, make sure that when you're picking out a GI, make sure that it's someone who is calm, collected, not going to freak you out or anything. Okay. The second thing in face my colonoscopy fear was the sedation itself. It scared me to be sedated, to not be in control. That, that thought scares me. Um, thinking about it, though, realizing what they're going to do and how, what that feels like, you start thinking, you know, this isn't that scary. It gets blown out of proportion in your head. This, this, this is what it's like, okay? Look, we're going to give you something, okay? Why don't you try counting back from 10? Okay, 10, 9, whoa. Is it already over? Where am I? Like, you don't even realize you've gone to sleep. It, it, it's basically like sleeping. The exact same thing. Um, it, it happens very quickly and it's over, and you, you don't have time to be afraid of it. All you're afraid of is you're afraid of the idea of it happening. But just focus on the now. Maybe distract yourself. Maybe even tell them, look, I'm really scared about that sedation. Can you just not tell me when you're going to do it, and we'll just talk about something? Maybe I could tell you about one of my favorite stories or something. Talk to them and let them know your fears and your concerns. Um, it's not it, it's for your benefit so that you're more comfortable. It's not something to be scared of. They made this as a way of helping you. Um, there are side effects, but nothing really serious. I mean, this is pretty much what you're going to have. You're going to have um, maybe some dizziness, maybe some nausea. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go away very, very carefully. They're actually going to have you an observation and keep an eye on you. And if they have any concerns that your body's not handling, well... They can help you just like that. They already know, you know, oh, well, what if I'm the exception? Come on. Um, so let's see what else. They constantly monitor. That's something to keep in mind. The side effects are, are nothing major. Um, I know everybody's scared of the sedation. It's very, very safe. Very, very safe. Um, a lot. Of, in fact, I was reading this one thing that said a lot of the statistics about it being unsafe are from early practice. Now, in modern practice, things have changed quite a deal. Um, so, uh, the next thing some people have a problem with about the idea of being seen. You don't want to be seen. If you're if you're sedated, you're going to have to be okay with this, um, which I had bigger concerns, so I wasn't really bothered by this. Um, there was this one part, you know, I get it, and she's like, um, we ha he's got this understudy with him. You have, do you, are you okay with him being in there? If so, sign off. And I was like, hey, whoever wants to see my butt. And the other, I thought it was funny. And, you know, that that re person at the, they, they thought it was funny. But then the person, oh, that's not what we're doing. And I was like, come on, it's my colonoscopy. I can joke about it however I want. Um, so we, we get in there and everything. And she's like, okay, pull down your pants. I'm, I'm laying down. She's like, okay, if you could pull down your pants. And she's like, okay, I'm just going to lift this real quick. I'm, I'm going to put it right back, and I'm like, Lydia, this guy's going to stick something inside of my butt. Like, I didn't say this to her, but I was just thinking, like, my least concern is using my butt, my bare butt when this guy's going to be putting something into my butt. 
So I, I, this is something that it seems to be more cultural. It, it's totally normal. But remember, it's just a little bit of embarrassment. Now remember, um, they're not going to be sitting there staring at your butt. They've got more important things to do. They've got lots of colonoscopies to do. They see butts all the time. It's just like a GI, um, uh, uh, gynecologist. You know, this is something where they're used to this. This is what they do. It's their job. It's not like they're going to, you know, the whole time during the colonoscopies, no, nobody is looking at your butt. The doctor's looking at the screen. The other, there's a nurse that's like his right hand man kind of thing or woman. You know, I'm not trying to be sexist. Um, that's taking the samples of the biopsies um, and you know doing their thing with the sucker thing, um, which doesn't hurt or anything. Um, they took a, a number of biopsies in, in my gut and none of it hurt. Um, I had very mild bleeding, but I was already having bleeding. In fact, uh, that night I went home and started on my on the medicine that he prescribed. And uh, which was a bit of a nightmare. The one pharmacy didn't have it. The others didn't have it. This one had it, but only a certain kind of it and only this certain amount. So they couldn't give me a full thing. And it was a whole thing. Anyways, so I started taking it that night. I take, took do two doses that night. The next morning I took a dose and already I was starting to have regular firm stools. And the blood content was drastically reduced. It was basically non-existent. And that's something that, Wow you know so okay um let's see what else is there to say about this um they, they keep you covered if that's something that will help ease your conscience they, they keep you covered as, as modest as, as they can um he's he's got the scope here you know and the things usually draped around his hands and he's you know feeding it in doing his thing you know and uh whether whether if, if you if you choose to be awake sometimes it can be a little bit alar alarming because there's people who come in and out sometimes um, different nurses and stuff and it's like ah, privacy my butt is showing but um, it, it's it nobody acts like this is weird and so their calmness kind of feeds onto you you know they see this all the time it's not something that they're overly concerned about and uh, don't think oh no they're I'm not going to be pretty in my butt. Like, don't worry about it, okay? Like, it's a colonoscopy. They're there to, to fix the things that are broken. They're not there to give you a rating, okay? Um, and the last thing on their mind is 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 grading the look of your butt, okay? There, there's more important things that they've got on their minds. Um, and if I had been sedated, um, the 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 let me come back to that. I'll, I'll come back to that. But um, they aren't staring at your butthole. They do this all the time. You know, they, they try to give you as much modesty as, they, as you can. If you're sedated, you will have no memory of this happening. So you won't have to, well, if you're, unless you're at that lightest point of sedation. Um, and, you know, it's not something to, that this isn't something to worry about. It's just, it's going to be embarrassing. I understand that. Um, but having a baby is kind of embarrassing, you know. You push this child out of, out of you and and there's blood and then you push the afterbirth out and it's just nasty and the baby poops on you it's just it's just gross like you know yeah um okay so then the fourth uh the fourth uh thing um about facing my fear of colonoscopy is the colon prep itself everybody scared me they, i thought this was gonna be terrible it's not that bad um first off it, it's very safe second off it it wasn't it didn't taste bad everybody was like oh it's good it didn't. It was. It tasted like um, water with some salt in it, I guess. But like a mild salt. It was electrolytes. But uh, okay. So it wasn't that bad. Um, and if I had been sedated, the worst part would have been the colon prep. And the colon prep wasn't even that bad. So keep that in mind. Um, the fifth thing, the procedure itself, very safe. Colonoscopies are very safe. There are some complications that can happen. Usually it's not going to be major, and usually it's only, it's not going to happen in somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, if anything happens, they will catch it usually, and it will be fine because you're right there at the hospital. If it's not fine, um, you'll usually know it, you'll be in some kind of intense pain or have heavy bleeding or something. This is something that you need to talk to your doctor about, um, and they can, in most cases, fix it. Um, it the colonoscopy does not hurt. The procedure itself does not hurt, whether you're sedated or not sedated. Um, and there's going to be slight discomfort at some points because my insides were torn up, but it might not be the same for you. Um, and the room itself is kind of scary. Uh, it's It just kind of seems very impersonal. So try not to focus on that. Um, I mean, 
that's all that I really have to have to say about it. Colonoscopies, I know that you're going to be scared. Maybe an endoscopy. I know that you're going to be scared, but it's not as bad as you're thinking. And you'll get through it, and it'll be fine. And then once you're done, you're going to feel a lot better about the situation. And uh, so don't don't wait and let the problem get worse and worse and worse. Get it while it's still not as big of a deal. Okay. So hope that this helps, guys. Uh, stay safe.